A 65-year-old man robs a bank for only $1 and demands police send him to federal prison. Former inmate Big Herc, who did a decade in federal prison for bank robbery, comes on to break down this bizarre holdup. Welcome to After Hours, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Sam Goldberg. So truly a bizarre story out of Salt Lake City, Utah. A 65-year-old man named Donald Matthew Santa Croce shows up at a Wells Fargo bank, and like people do, he goes up to the teller. But he doesn't hand the teller a deposit or a withdrawal slip. Instead, it seems like Santa Croce handed the teller a note saying, quote, Please pardon me for doing this, but this is a robbery. Please give me one dollar. Thank you. Santa Croce reportedly then asked bank employees to call the police and waited in the lobby for them to arrive. When authorities did arrive, Santa Croce handed the police a one dollar bill and asked to be sent to federal prison. At the time of this recording, authorities have not said why Santa Croce wanted to go to prison. The 65-year-old was later booked in the Salt Lake County Jail on a robbery charge. So joining us now to break down this truly one-of-a-kind holdup is Big Herc. Big Herc is the founder and host of Fresh Out YouTube and a former inmate who spent 10 years in federal prison for bank robbery. Big Herc, thanks so much for coming on. What would cause someone to willingly want to go back to jail? Um, when you pretty much checked out, they call it. And checked out is a term where a person has given up on life. they given up on themselves. They really find no purpose in living in the free world. So an easy escape would be to either commit a, a violentless crime to get sent back to prison or jail so that they don't have to worry about all the burdens that they were dealing with on the street. Or a lot of guys will violate and go back to prison where they can get a prison job and have a, you know, a bed, food, and just live the prison life because um, they, they pretty much become institutionalized and, and the real world doesn't really suit them. So demanding $1 and then asking to be put back in jail, it's a little different from what you did? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're talking about I wasn't trying to check out it. I wasn't trying to check out a society. I was trying to put together a financial move in a very reckless fashion, nonetheless. But it wasn't, you know, something like that today I would never entertain. I mean, as a grown man who's in his 60s, who's doing that, that's telling you what his life has come to. He has no purpose. He feels he has no value on the street. Those people in prison who are excited to go work in the kitchen, who's excited to go work for Unicor, who look forward to commissary, who uh, embrace, um, you know, seeing comrades that they hadn't seen because these guys are back in prison. That's a different type of mentality. I never associated with people like that in prison. How would uh, other inmates respond to someone who intentionally tried to get themselves locked up? Um, it, I mean, it really wouldn't make a difference. I mean, somebody like that has their own niche in prison, whether it's uh, doing time by themselves or maybe associating with other deadbeats like that who have that same prison mentality, convict, ex-felon mentality. I mean, dude, a dollar? I mean, what does that tell you? You know what I mean? And he wants to go to feds. See, typically that would be probably a state case because it's not really affecting interstate commerce. So, it, you know, it, it's not necessarily a federal case, but going to the feds and wanting to go to a camp, that would be somebody who felt like, you know, I'm locked up, but there's no walls or fences. So it's a sense of freedom, but somebody's telling me what to do. It's like going to grown up daycare. Hmm. Well, he, he got sent to the county jail, but is there anything you know about the specific jail in Utah? It's a federal prison that he wanted to go to? Um, I don't know anything about the, the federal prison as far as in Utah, how they get down out there. I know there is a lot of uh, uh, child-related cases in there. A lot of those guys have some weird cases, and they pretty much have their own yard. So Utah is notorious for underage related cases that these guys wouldn't last in the mainstream population. So they have their own institutions there for those individuals. But as far as uh, 
why he wants to go to that camp there. Maybe he's from Utah. Maybe he's done time there before. He felt like he's comfortable going back there. And it's sad, man. That just shows you that the guy, he's pretty much um, lost his sense of freedom as an individual who can function in the real world. Sad, I think, is the right word to you. So what, what's the difference between the county jail that he got put into and the federal prison that he wanted to get put into? Well, county jail is, you know, people coming in and out. You got drug addicts. You got purse snatchers. You got rapists. You got child molesters. You got all these different people, people fighting their cases, you know, um, in and out with the with the um, the COs in the, in the county jail, the, the, lo- the local sheriffs. It's, it's a lot more... Uh, instability as far as your programming and and people coming in and out. Once you get to an institution, it's people doing time. People have conditioned themselves to make that home. I never looked at it like that, but in prison, it's sad, man. You got people in there who are actually waxing their floor, polishing their toilets and sinks, and they give value to that. They act like they take pride, but they don't take pride in their freedom. You, you know, you, you left your kids, you left your wife, you left your family. Now you're in prison and you're buffing a prison floor and shining a toilet and you're ironing your clothes and you're thinking you're somebody in prison. That's 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 pitiful, man. Maybe it's the structure of it all. Well, it's the mentality. It's not the structure. You don't have to buy into the structure. I did time. All the guys I pretty much associate with now that I did time with, none of them brought into that structure. None of them act like they were all they could be in prison. None of them really adapted that prison mentality or psychosis. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a matrix just like it is out here. You can either buy into it or you can, you can fight it and hold on to your sense of humanity. So when you get out, you can function. A lot of people, they lose it in there. Can you think of anything in prison that would ever make you want to go back to jail? Hell no. (laughs) <laughs> there's nothing in prison that would ever drive me to want to go back there there's not one thing every day i was in there i felt like a loser i felt like i let my family down i felt like i let myself down i felt like i was selling myself short the level of the conversation the mentality of the people the racism the hatred all the the stupidity i just seen that and then the, the fact that i'm allowing another grown man to tell me what to do as far as my daily functions, there's that you could you couldn't pay me to want to go back and subject myself to that type of environment. Big Herc, thank you so much. Appreciate you coming on and good to see you again. Hey, thank you, man. And make sure you watch that. <laughs> <laughs> T- telling me that. <laughs> hey, man, that that's my motto. <laughs> I used to tell guys all the time, man, go to the shower and watch that. <laughs> <laughs> All the people out watching the show, man. Uh, you see it. You see it in your shirt, Big Herc. Thanks again. All right, man.